Mr. Jamie Foxx, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Jamie Foxx. Well, it's great to have you back on the show. Yeah, it's lovely to see nice, you. Nice, man. Okay. Man, Ray Charles. You know what? You know, I was telling the, music, the guys in the back that, that the, the people in that clip, they actually play real... Inst the, there, was a real there was a real band. Like, Incredi you know, oh, an incredible movie. And what I might think in that, it had a big, uh, a big impact on your career. I mean, I know, obviously, you were both thought was an actor, but, but winning the Oscar, how much does that actually change things? Man, it changes everything, because, you know, like... I mean, you, you look at look how Hollywood is designed. There's only a... A couple of avenues you can go. It's either the real popcorn movies and you're making huge money, or you find a movie like, like Ray, where you know you get critical acclaim and it and it's commercially successful. But you get a chance to walk into that door, where you know only a few get to to go in. And my thing was, during that Oscar time, I just had my cell phone getting people's cell phone numbers, like Warren Beatty and. You know, Clint Eastwood. I said, man, let me get your digits. And they're like, what? <laughs> she said, I just want to have your number. You know what I'm saying? I was just doing, I was just doing goofy stuff. Like, yeah, yeah just let me call you. Did, were... did you call Clint Eastwood? Uh, no. Okay. I did. <laughs> did you call Warren Beatty? Uh, yeah, I did. Okay. What did, you, what did you Beatty. say to Warren when he you was, called him? He, he was cool. Warren Beatty, uh, Halle Berry. I mean, just you know. Everybody. Hold on, Halle Berry. You see, I well, can I mean, understand I why you'd want Halle Berry's yeah, number. Yeah, but it wasn't. It wasn't on no. You know. You, you know, weren't. You weren't hitting on her. Just friends. Uh huh. I get the feeling that you enjoy, obviously you're respected as an actor, but at the same time you're a movie star. Yeah. And, and I get the feeling you, you fully enjoy that kind of side of life. Would I be right in thinking that you appreciate the benefits? The benefits, this? man. Getting in the clubs and, I mean, you know... <laughs> let me ask you this. Restaurants and I think I know the answer. Girls this, coming, Let me ask you this. Know? Where did you spend uh, New Year's Eve? Well, I, you know what? Oh, yeah, yeah, you were talking about like, this past year. Yeah, this year. is the benefits of yeah, being benefits, a superstar. Yeah, yeah, I, I got a friend, you know, he got some money. He got some money. And uh, he flew me, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Jonah Hill, and some other cats, and we flew to Australia, right? And we did the countdown in Australia. Get out, you might have, or you might, Jamie, get out, you might. <laughs> so we did the countdown in Australia, then jumped back on a plane, and then did the countdown in Vegas. That's crazy. So he had. Yeah. That's how famous yeah. he had two New Year's Eve. Yeah, that's how that's successful crazy. you are now. That was two New Year's Eve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but, it, but, but when I got to Vegas, for some reason, they wouldn't let me in the club. It was what? crazy. Why not? I don't know. It was like, you know what? You know how things are going too good for you? And somebody just... They actually know, stopped you from going in the club? Would not let me in the club. Now, when you see ID, I was like, really? And people was like, oh, man, Ray Charles can't get in the club. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> So, what you, so, I, so I imagine you went back alone to the hotel room and just went no, to a No, no, we, fi we figured it out, man. You know, yeah, I just yeah. went... I, we went in... I had my daughter with me. She was 18, so, you know, that was an another thing to me. She was like, yo, you messing up my New Year's. So we actually had to, like... <laughs> she, she went off on me in front of her friends. Like, you flying around with Leonardo DiCaprio and screwed up my New Year's. You better make it right. And it was, like, 11.45. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, shit. And, like, the, and all the security guards looked at me. I said, man, where can we go? And so we went to this one area. And the dude said, uh, no, he said, well, I'll take you to the pool. We can watch the fireworks at the pool. So we run to the pool. No, Dad, it's all screwed up. I knew you were going to, you and your Hollywood friends, you messed it up. I'll, I'll see you in therapy, Dad. That type of thing. Right? <laughs> so now it's 11, 11.50. We get to the pool and they're, hey, where, where, are you, where are you going? Where are you going? I said, well, we want to watch the fireworks. No, they got to gotta leave. So I didn't, have, I didn't have enough, you know, push to get into the, to the pool area. Like, right so they kicked Ray Charles out of the pool area. So then... Then they said, the old security guard, older security guard that was with us, he says, hey, my wife works up at this club called Prestige, and they'll let you guys in. Wow. And it's 11.56. <laughs> and she's going off. We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. I knew it. I knew it. You're going to screw So we get in the elevator, and it's packed. And then we finally get out, and it's like, they're literally going 15, 14. Wow. And they opened up an area for us, and we got there, and we watched the fireworks, and it was cool. Wow. So, yeah. Dad, pull it yeah, off again. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That would have been terrible if you hadn't managed that. Terrible, man. Especially when your kids go at you. It's but crazy, because you can't really cuss your kids out, you know? <laughs> but she's a... Don't take this the wrong way, but she's a very beautiful young woman. I don't take it the wrong way. She's 18 years old now. She's and, uh, very, very are you uh, Are you comfortable with that? I mean, presumably she's getting interest from young men now, I would have thought. Yeah, I mean, and that was the thing. She didn't really know. Like, when she was younger, she didn't know she was filling out and stuff. And... and... <laughs> 
because she didn't, you know, she's just, you know, a normal kid, and I could tell what was going on, yeah, you know, because yeah. I, I know I'm me, you know, I mean, I remember, like, when I was, like, you know, well, no, I still am, so I would try to protect her at all costs. I remember taking her to, like, a Lil Wayne concert, <laughs> and I was just, you know, hiding her from everybody, just, <laughs> you know, no, go this, go this way, this way, hide your ass, uh-uh, don't go this way. <laughs> And then they were smoking weed in the concert, uh -oh. and the weed is coming, and I'm like, <laughs> don't breathe this, it's bad for you. Don't, don't. <laughs> so, uh, Some for dad, none for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so you do all you can, man, you know, because, cause, you know, I mean, they're your light, man, yeah. and, 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 you know, they don't know, but, uh, but she's just such a great girl, so, you know. Okay, so I'm excited you're in town, not just because it's lovely to have you on the show, but there's a new movie out. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of Quentin Tarantino. Yes, yes. I love, uh, I'm very excited when he has a new film yes. coming out. I was doubly excited when I knew it was going to be a Western and yeah. uh, very excited when he was working with you, but also it was Django, and I was aware that there were Django movies before, but yeah. this is very different to the Django yeah. movies from the 60s, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell us about this Western, tell us about uh, your version of Django. Well, Quentin Tarantino tackles something that's incredible. First of all, he, he, he's amazing in how he layers movies. Like when you see what he did with Inglorious Bastards, so he's, he sort of changed history in a bit. And this... He does the same thing, only he, he does a spaghetti western, but it's with the backdrop of slavery. And basically, Django was about a free slave. He, become, he becomes a freed slave, and he gets freed by Dr. King Schultz, who's played by Christoph Waltz, who's a, a fantastic actor. And once he, he gets freed, they, he, uh, Christoph is a bounty hunter. So they go on this bounty hunting run, but he finds out that my wife uh, has been taken from me, and he didn't. And at that time, you know, slaves were not allowed to have to have marriages. And he says, "Wow!" After hearing my stories, he says, "Well, I want to help you find your wife." So we go from plantation to plantation on on on, uh, on horses to try to find my wife. Now, what has happened though? My wife is on the plantation where Leonardo DiCaprio is the master. So it's like, when I tell women this, they don't really think that's all that bad. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, but it is bad. So, yeah, but so that, so it's this, it's this crazy journey that Quentin Tarantino put together. Now, here's what's crazy. I didn't know about the movie. I saw on the internet Will Smith, Quentin Tarantino, Django. I was like, damn. Because he wrote the part with Will Smith in mind. Yeah, I was like, another project that I didn't hear about, right? And so I fired my management. <laughs> and uh, switched up, and then the next thing you know, the part became open, and I got a chance to, to go in and, and basically audition for him. He said, I need you to get your own horse. And I said, wow, I actually have my own horse. Because you're from Texas, originally. Yeah, I'm from Texas, so, you know, uh, <laughs> so I was, you know, <laughs> yeah, I came He's in a good like, old boy, you're a good old boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know what? <laughs> No. Can, can you do that a bit longer? We can use that as a wing tone. Can you do that? Just, uh... <laughs> so, so, I mean, I have my own horse, and what was crazy, I said, well, can I... If, he, he eventually gives me the part, and I said, well, can I ride my own horse? Because that way I could sort of learn the tricks, and for anybody who rides a horse, you know, they, they're like humans. They know who's on top, who's riding them, so... <laughs> we knew what you meant, okay? But it was great. I'm riding my horse, and, and I have a female horse, yeah. and her name is Cheetah. <laughs> now, you know, you're making your own jokes up yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Y'all just nasty, just to be nasty. <laughs> so, no, but, but, but what, was, what was interesting, though, Cheetah had to learn, like, all the, you know, his explosions and everything like that. Oh, yeah, so, to be on a set, on a movie yeah, set. Yeah, yeah, so it was sort of like the journey of Django becoming, like, his own, and Cheetah learning all of the, uh, uh, you know, the tricks and things. And at one point, there was... Um, like, they would put those screens up to, like, shoot, you know, for, for lighting and stuff. And she would, you know, she would spook. And then the guy, uh, the, the trainer would grab her bit, and she'd spook even more. So I said, listen, don't grab her bit. Just let her get used to it. And plus, she's a, she's a, she's a, I think she's a black female horse. So when you grab black women by the, uh-uh, no, please don't grab my mouth. <laughs> please don't. <laughs> please don't grab my mouth. So... But you have a good relationship with her, obviously. She trusts yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was great. And then, if you watch the movie, when you guys see the movie, check out the scene where I have to wear, I have to ride bareback. Oh, yeah. And that was real, and that was the scariest part. Quentin goes, um, hey, man, um, uh, 
I need to, uh, I need to get you to ride the horse uh, bareback. And I was like, man, that's, that's crazy. You know, that's death. You know what that is, right? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, well, the stunt guy fell. So we need you. <laughs> so I'm like, you're serious? I said, what are going He said, well, no, we, we got it set up. It'll be safe. So there was cones on this side, death on this side. <laughs> and then the horse had to run down this, like, 300, 400-yard track, and then people at the end that were pulling up their sleeves like they're gonna catch the horse. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but anyway, when I get on the horse, the horse was used to the stunt guy. So as soon as I get on it, it rears up, takes off 28 miles an hour. Wow. And so I'm like this, with, with, a, with a rifle in my hand and holding on to the mane. Now, on the outside, I look like Django. <laughs> but on the inside, I, look, I feel like Little Richard. It was just crazy. So, <laughs> So, but to ride the horse bareback, and they caught that, when you see it in the movie, it makes all yeah. the difference in the film, and that's what I wanted to do. And you can see it, shoot. Let's show yeah. everyone a little uh, sure, taste sure. of it now. Uh, I've seen the film. I've seen it twice. Oh, okay. oh, I man. love it, and I'm going to go and see it again. And oh, it's, man, just, it's just thanks. so much fun. Have yeah. a look. This is Django. This is uh, out on January the 18th over here in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're going to have more fun at the movies this year than with yeah. Django. Yeah. yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, now, here's what I need to ask you. Uh, the soundtrack, uh, always in a Quentin Tarantino yes. movie, you look forward to the uh, soundtrack, but I was, I've got the soundtrack, but listen to it. You wrote one of the tracks, or you co-wrote yeah, one. Yeah, well, here's the thing. Quentin Tarantino has never done an actual soundtrack to the movie. He's always he uses, a licensed song. Yeah, he uses songs and music so, from the films. So, so this time, I said, Quentin, with this movie, since it's so groundbreaking, you need to do... Uh, a soundtrack because uh, John Legend had, 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 had sent him a song on a cassette tape, which was smart because Quentin doesn't like, you know, computer stuff. And the song was, uh, call the police, call the corner. And I was like, man, that's dope. I said, now that's dope for like mainstream. Yeah. I said, but you need the hood because you're doing, this is like Django is like the hood. And so Rick Ross, who's your brother, uh, well, hang on. I should just—I should, I know who Rick Ross is. Uh, and just in case you do think we're related, this should prove that we're probably not that close. If you have a look at Rick, I've got a piece. There's Rick. <laughs> and obviously there are some similarities. <laughs> He's oh, a fine man. figure of a man, isn't oh, he? Oh man, look, okay. Rick, hey, look, Rick gets it, man. So I'm watching Rick and Quentin talk to each other, and I said, Rick, I said, I got it. I said, I'm not a rapper, but I got a song idea for you for this movie, and it should be called. A hundred black coffins, right? Because it's a spaghetti western. And I'm gonna say it to you. And I told him, I said, I'm not a rapper, but here's what I think you should say: I need a hundred black coffins for a hundred bad men, a hundred black graves so I can lay their ass in. I need a hundred black preachers with a black sermon to tell from a hundred black Bibles while we send them all to hell. I need a hundred black coffins. Come on, man. Right. Pretty good, man. You had that. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I said, but here's what, we're not going to do the track yet. Let's marinate. Let's let the movie finish. Because we were just like halfway through, through the movie. But after the movie was over, I met my home studio. And I did some checking. In the westerns, when they whistle, that meant, you know, be ready to draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And you, were, you probably remember this. Um, you remember the, the cowboys that, that were the singers, the tenors, the ha, those voices, ha, 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 right? No, I must admit, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm more, right. I'm more hood. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I combined the two. I grabbed the microphone. I know you mean, like in the old one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, from the spaghetti western yeah, stuff. Yeah, sort of like, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so what I did, I combined the two. I grabbed the microphone and I did. <laughs> Ding. That's good. Ding. <laughs> Ding. I need a hundred black coffins for a hundred bad men, a hundred black... So I sing the... Exactly. So I sing the song, send, I drive the song over to Quentin Tarantino, let him hear it in the truck, because he doesn't like computer stuff. Drive over to Rick uh, Ross, let him hear it at his hotel, and then the rest was history. Well, I'm going to ask you, if you, we have a piano here, we know you play piano, yeah. could we trouble you for... I'll do something, yeah. I'll He's going to do some song. stuff for you. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. As you can see, we've moved over to the performance side of the studio. We'll get Jamie Foxx. <laughs> Already, you know, one of the best-looking men we've had on the show, an Oscar winner, and he can play piano like this. It's absolutely sickening. Because, ladies... <laughs> what are you going to do for us? 
My life is lights, camera, action But I get no satisfaction Cause my old lady up and left About two weeks ago Well, she up and just left me Damn, it took all my money But even though she disappeared One thing she didn't know Is I got on one mind Way over time That's good to me And she gives me what I need Well, it's like she had no feelings And she wasn't even willing to admit to me that when we made love that it didn't move her soul then quickly came the problems and when we finally hit rock bottom well she thought I'd die right on the spot but I smiled cause she didn't know said I got a And she gives me what I need. I got a woman. Come and sit down. Now. Jamie Fox, ladies and gentlemen. Come and sit down. We'll chat a bit more before we. Uh... Let me just see if I got that right. So on the one hand, you start the song and we're feeling sorry for you because you got left and she took everything. Then we find out you've been cheating on her anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, nah. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no. Uh, am I right in thinking at the end of that song when you looked in my eyes, we, we, we had a moment? That was a situation, but, but I'm comfortable with it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> OK, uh, so that's good. But do you, uh, do you want to... I mean, you had a hit album, but would you like to do that? You said you don't rap, but you could rap, couldn't you? No, I, would, I wouldn't. Rap. You wouldn't want to rap? No, 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 no. Why not? No, I, I'm strictly R&B, man. I like singing. I like, I like romantic music. Where the R&B? Romantic music. Yeah, that's what I... Whatever she said. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was, exactly. What did you say? Slow jams. Slow oh, jams. So, OK, slow... Slow jams. OK. <laughs> See, for me, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> the song she's talking about is how I got in the music game. I threw, a, I threw all of these parties, and I threw a party one day for... It was Puffy and, and uh, Jay-Z and Maya and Missy Tweet for real way back in the day, like uh, when Puff was like really like in the music, like really going hard. And there was a guy that walks into my house, his jaw was a little busted, and he had a backpack on. I said, who's that kid? And they said, that's, that's Kanye West. And I said, well, what does he do? They said, well, he raps. I said, really? Well, when you come to my house, you have to perform. So I walk into him, I said, man, they tell me you rap. He says, yeah. He rapped, and it was absolutely amazing. I said, dude, why don't you have a record out? And he says, well, I produce for Jay-Z, whatever, whatever. He said, but I have a song for you. I said, well, I got a studio in the crib. So we went back in the crib, and he, he, said, he said, this is a song. She says she wants some Marvin Gaye, some Luther Vandross. I said, I got it, I got it. She says she wants some Marvin Gaye. And he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I got to put the R&B, you know, the sauce on it. That's the, that's the sauce. He says, don't put that on it. <laughs> He says, because you're going to screw the song up. <laughs> and he said, r &B, he said, music has changed. Just sing it simple. So I sung it, but I sung it begrudgingly, like, eh, this is whack. He's never going to make it. He's yeah. terrible. This is terrible. The song is terrible. <laughs> so I left and did a bad movie, came back in about five months. And when I got back, that song was number one. And so that's how I got into the music. Incredible. Again. What a great guest you are. Thanks. Thank you for coming Thank on the show. You. Thank you for performing for us as well. Mr. Jamie Fox, ladies and gentlemen. The movie opens on January 18th, as I said. Okay, thank you, sir.